Hi there, and welcome to the first submodule about how effective lockdowns are in highly unequal societies. The goal of this submodule is that at the end of it, you, as a learner, should be able to explain to others how inequality impacts the effectiveness of lockdowns. Before starting the submodule, we will review three core concepts that are crucial to understanding its content. The first concept concerns how COVID-19 spreads through the population. After all, how can we discuss the economic effects of COVID-19 if we don't have a clear understanding of the virus itself? The second concept is about what lockdown policies are. And finally, we will clarify what we mean when we talk about economic inequality. Let's start with a brief review of what we know about COVID-19, which is short for Coronavirus Disease 2019. First, let's discuss what happens if someone gets the virus. A striking finding has been that this person is likely to not even realize that he or she is infected, since roughly 60% of cases in South Africa have been found to be asymptomatic, meaning that they have no symptoms. If a person does have symptoms, these might include fever, cough, fatigue, shortness of breath or breathing difficulties, as well as loss of smell and loss of taste. Of the people with symptoms, some develop acute respiratory distress syndrome and might need to go to the hospital, where a small percentage of these cases eventually succumbs to the virus. The probability of going to the hospital or dying is highly dependent on age. For example, in my computer model for South Africa, me and my co-authors assume, based on a study from Wuhan, China, that in the age category of 0 to 10, there's a 0.2% chance of needing to go to the hospital. Very low indeed. However, if someone is older than 80 years, there is a 27.3% chance of needing to go to the hospital. Next, of those who have to go to the hospital, the elderly are far more likely to die than the young. For example, in our computer model, we assume, based on South African hospital records, that a hospitalized person in the age category of 40 to 50 has a 5% chance to die. Whereas someone in the 60 to 70 age category, that is already in the hospital, has a 16.6% chance that the disease is fatal. A second category of interest is how the virus spreads between humans. We know that the virus can spread through small droplets and likely also through micro droplets known as aerosols. Furthermore, the virus potentially spreads through surfaces. However, the evidence of this is increasingly shaky. Droplets and aerosols spread through coughing, sneezing, but also through breathing. And it has been shown that transmission through the air is much more likely indoors than outdoors. This knowledge has major implications for the policies that we will discuss next. These policies are the lockdown policies. In this module, lockdown policies are defined as policies to stop or slow the spread of COVID-19 through non-medical means, also known as non-pharmaceutical measures. There are many lockdown policies available to policymakers and some of the most important ones used have been border restrictions, curfews, health testing, obligatory mask wearing or hand washing, public awareness campaigns, school, non-essential business and government service closures, stay at home or quarantine measures, or restrictions on mass gatherings. The final concept that we need to define is that of economic inequality. In this submodule, economic inequality means inequality in the distribution of both income and wealth. The most common measure of inequality is the Gini coefficient, which measures inequality on a scale of 0 to 1, where 1 is complete equality and 0 complete inequality. This means that in a country where one person owns all the wealth, the Gini coefficient of wealth would be 0. And if in a perfectly communist utopia where everyone earns exactly the same income, the income inequality might be 1. Empirically, the Gini coefficient is never anywhere near these two extremes. For example, in South Africa, which has one of the highest income inequality Ginis in the world, there the World Bank measured it at roughly 0.63 in 2014. 
Now that we have established our core concepts, let's discuss how increased economic inequality will affect the effectiveness of lockdown policies. In theory, most of the effects of inequality on the spread and lethality of the virus are negative. For example, more unequal countries often have less total hospital capacity. And we know that one of the major dangers of this disease is that hospitals might get overcrowded. If that happens, people won't get the care they need, and thus there will be more fatalities from COVID-19. A second disadvantage of inequality on the effectiveness of lockdown policies is one of compliance. In theory, in unequal countries, there is less compliance with lockdown policies, especially among the poorer parts of the population. There might be several reasons for this. For example, in many poorer districts, people live in cramped living conditions where distancing is impossible. Another important factor is that staying at home is much, much easier if you are relatively wealthy and or if you have job security. In unequal societies, those working in the informal sector will immediately lose income and hence food security if they stay at home. This makes them unable to comply with, for example, strict stay-at-home lockdown policies. Also, government communications do not always reach these areas. Thus, people might not know about what the disease really is and why certain lockdown policies are needed. Furthermore, many parts of the population do not have big financial buffers. So a lockdown cannot necessarily be sustained for as long as it could be in a more equal nation making a second lockdown almost impossible. Finally, in poorer parts of these countries, the government has failed to provide essential services such as security, electricity and water on a consistent basis. Hence, there might be very low trust in lockdown policies. And thus, people may not comply with them. Luckily, there might be one big advantage that unequal countries have, and that has to do with demography. Often in unequal countries, the poorer parts of the population are younger, both because they have more children and because they do not make it to such an old age as the wealthy. Indeed, countries like those in Africa have seen very low fatality rates, even though they've had a lot of infections, likely because of this demographic effect. Now then, what are the most important consequences of inequality for government strategic objectives of lockdown policies? For one, very unequal countries have a much lower chance of actually eliminating the disease. It is far more realistic that they aim for a slowing down of the spread of COVID-19 rather than eliminating it completely. Having discussed our core concepts about COVID-19, lockdown policies and economic inequality, as well as how this affects lockdown effectiveness, please ask yourself, are you now able to explain how inequality impacts the effectiveness of lockdown policies to others. Please go through the course materials until you feel confident that you can explain this to someone else.